to kick us off, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Jana London. I'm a global senior program manager here at AWS on our nonprofits team. And today I'm going to be hosting our virtual office hours as we're talking about all things preparing for the 2021 AWS Imagine Grant. Um, before we dive into a little bit more of the contact, just want to give you all a lay of the land. Welcome to Amazon Chime. This might be a familiar platform for some of you, or it might be new. So throughout the conversation, we're going to be covering lots of material. You're going to have questions. Please do not hold back those questions. As you all have been dropping in your locations today, please, we encourage you all to drop in your questions there as well. We are moderating the chat and given time at the end, I promise you, we've left a good chunk there. We'll answer as many questions as we can. Um, and remember that uh, we'll also be dropping in the links there as well. So everything that's going to be shared in the presentation, instead of screenshotting, you're more than welcome to do that. But we also will have those links in the chat too. If you have any additional questions, maybe something a little bit more specific to your application um, that you may not want to be asking in a larger group environment today, understand? Well, we have a, an email address there that you can send any and all questions related to AWS Imagine Grant. That's AWS Imagine Grant at Amazon.com. That's moderated daily. So go ahead and send us anything if there's anything outstanding that you'd like to have answered after today's office hours. And then as you all are watching, like I said, you're more than welcome to take screenshots of the information that's shared today. Zoom in, zoom out, uh, however you would like to preview the material that we're sharing today. So a little bit about today's agenda. We're going to start very high level talking a little bit about what the AWS Imagine Grant is all about and then talking about how to apply. We're going to be going over some best practices and common pitfalls that we've seen um, kind of in the past that nonprofits can avoid to really making sure that you're submitting your strongest your most best application um, for this grant opportunity. We'll also talk a little bit and provide some guidance on how to approach the technical elements of the grant. This is an area we had a lot of questions. A lot of folks are getting familiar with the different tools and services and resources that we have available. So we have one of our uh, AWS experts that's going to join us and talk a little bit about that. And then as I've alluded to many times, this is all about the questions that you all are bringing for us today. So we'll bring some, um, allow for some time there to dive into those, um, just so you all feel as though you're most prepared for your application that you'll be submitting um, at the end of the month. So I am not going to be the only one that you'll be hearing from today. In fact, I do not have all the answers for you today. Therefore, I've brought two experts to join me. Um, Lorkin, who is our nonprofits program manager here at AWS, and Mike, who is our senior solutions architect here at AWS. These are going to be my partners in crime throughout today's conversation to really pull apart the application um, and what the grant is all about um, that we're hoping will help you as you are identifying the project to which you want to um, submit or maybe identifying the category in which you want to be submitting your application um, for. So with that being said, I think we just dive right in. Um, and like I said, let's start from the very beginning. Uh, many of you might have applied for Imagine Grant in the past, or maybe this will be your first cycle applying, um, but there's a lot of things that have changed. So Lurkin, I'd like for you uh, to join me uh, and help and answer this very first question, which what is AWS Imagine Grant and how do you, we apply? Absolutely. Thanks, Shanna. I'm happy to be here. And I might have even spoken to some of you on the call. So thank you again for joining. I know we've had some changes to the program and I'm excited to share those with you. So first of all, at its basic level, you probably already know this, but the Imagine Grant is our once annual funding opportunity to, for, to get resources from AWS for a technology driven project. And by that, we really mean a project that's leveraging technology for mission impact or a way that technology is supporting your organization so you can focus more on your mission and less on maintaining servers and distractions from your mission. So really those are the spirit of projects that we want to see come through and what will really make a difference for your organization. So we have nonprofits that are cultural orgs that are digitizing their assets. We have research organizations who are storing terabytes of data in the cloud and any number of mission critical activities that are happening in the cloud. And you may come to this knowing exactly what you want to do. You have a project. You just need to help with the technical elements. We will get into that. 
or you may still be considering what am I going to put forward, what am I going to apply for, and what do these categories mean? So we're going to talk through that in the next few steps. But I also want to address kind of what the Imagine Grant is in the awards package because we designed it to be a holistic package of resources. So we're we know the cash funding is critical. Nonprofits can't survive without that. But we're also including AWS training to help your staff get upskilled on the cloud. Uh, we also want to include AWS promotional credits, and those apply to specifically the costs that you would incur using cloud technology with AWS. So if you're cur curious about what that means, that's what that means. And then also we want to help you tell your story and you know, get it in front of other funders, the way that you're being innovative, the way that you've designed these projects with technology to you know, have a digital first approach and be a nonprofit that's kind of future looking. So I'm curious too, as all of you are listening, what are your, what are your roles? You can drop them in the chat. Are you a fundraiser? Are you wearing many hats? Are you IT fundraising and CEO? Uh, we know that often you play multiple roles in your organization. So maybe drop in the chat your role and even your mission area. Okay, grant writer, IT director. Yep, I knew we'd have a mix of you. So, and one of my first tips, and we'll get to this a little bit later, is if you're the grant writer, you definitely are going to want to touch base with your IT team. So it's it's pretty hard to do it without a cross-functional team. And, and that's the conversation we kind of want to see happening throughout this process, is where does technology and mission really connect for you and your organization? So we have some tips for you coming forward. So let's dig into these new awards categories. So if you've applied to the Imagine Grant in the past, we just had one where we, we were looking for kind of innovative think big projects. We split that into two really to address the different stages of um, nonprofit digital transformation and technology adoption. So we have the Go Further Faster package, which is, as you can see, we're offering up to $150,000 in cash, $100,000 in AWS promotional credit, and really looking for kind of sector-wide solutions, repeatable solutions, things that will really drive your mission forward at a big scale. It's it's using advanced technology services, and Mike will Mike will jump into kind of what we mean by that in a little bit. The other is our momentum to modernize, and this is for you if you're just thinking about I need to migrate my data first. I need to set up a data warehouse. I have a discrete project that if we could just do that, we could unlock a lot of potential for our organization and kind of move you forward in digital transformation. So that's how we're separating the two. And taking a step further, let's look at some of the key elements that might be here for you if you're a go further faster candidate or you're a momentum to modernize candidate. So really thinking through the scope, the impact, and the timeline. So maybe you have a think big idea, but you're not quite ready to submit that yet you might want to be a modernizer first or just thinking through when the timeline would happen all these resources would be granted in january 2022 so if that's too soon if that's too late you know that may <clears throat> that may impact what you want to put forward so mike i'd love to kick it over to you from a technology perspective like what gets you excited in a think big project and what do you think is more kind of migration to innovation, modernization to innovation, and the difference between those two things. Mike, I think you were here on mute. You know, what's funny is I had just taken myself off mute and somehow I got back on mute. So thank you for that. Uh, what I was going to say is I think it's important to look at some of the Imagine Grant winners from previous years. So if we look at like SkyTruth from 2019, they use things, well, they, they have uh, machine learning algorithms they use to analyze satellite imagery so that they can detect bilge dumping around the world. They then aggregate this data and, and use it to inform government and activists and journalists and other people so that they can stop this illegal practice. GBH out of Boston, uh, they were a winner last year. They are implementing a scalable cloud-based video ed editing system to transform the way that public media organizations are uh, delivering content nationwide. And if we look at uh, an organization like FamilySearch, who also won last year, they're using machine learning for handwriting recognition to transcribe genealogical records across not only centuries, but across multiple countries and dialects. So these are all examples of 
organizations that are, are, are really making, you know, big bet type of projects or really think big type of projects. And if we look at then the other category, momentum to modernize, these you can think of this in many cases as a step on the way to go further faster. Uh, you know, in some cases, maybe you're an organization that you're in an on-prem data center and you want to move to the cloud because you know that moving to the cloud will help you unlock uh, you know, things that you can do in the future, uh, you know, future business value. Um, I'm actually working with an organization that is already in AWS, but they're undergoing a digital transformation initiative. And by that, I mean that they have a lot of data silos, but they know that they can unlock a lot of value out of that data that they have if they had a consolidated data strategy. So they're building a data lake, they're curating data from old guard databases, flat files and disparate systems, and they're reimagining how data governance is handled. So I mean, they're already in the cloud, but it's really, uh, again, a, a digital modernization initiative that they're undergoing. So, so hopefully that gives you some sense for the, you know, the go further faster, really those think big ideas versus other projects where we, we need to modernize and, and be cloud native so that we can eventually get to those for, go further faster ideas. Absolutely. And just to note, it doesn't mean you're not thinking big if you see yourself in the modernizer category right now. It just means that maybe you're not there yet. Or like Mike said, you, you need to take a step on the way there. Um, so yeah, great examples, Mike. Thank you. And just to confirm um, the timeline for everybody here. So as we know, the round one application is coming up soon. The deadline is June 30th, and how you apply is right now live on our website is the link to the application portal. It's a web form. You've already reviewed the questions if you've downloaded the instructions, so it's fairly simple. Complete that uh, application and submit by June 30th, and then we will let you know if you're invited to apply for round two by July 31st. So pretty quick timeline. We're not going to leave you waiting for a year. Uh, to let you know and um, we want to respect your time and your efforts here and some of these projects can't wait so if you're invited to round two we will let you know what that application form looks like when you're invited we will ask some more detailed in information we're going to want to know what your technology architecture looks like a little bit better idea of what your budget would be and what our funding would go toward and then if you're invited to round two you'll know if you're an ultimate winner by november 30th so at a high level, that's the timeline we're working on. Great, thank you, Larkin. Really appreciate the lay of the land, that overview of exactly what the AWS Imagine Grant structure looks like and really highlighting some of the differences of how it uh, is moving forward this year and with those two different categories, especially. I know folks online that have applied in the past, that's definitely a huge change. So now what I'd like to do is just switch gears a little bit um, and kind of dive into some of those best practices um, that folks on the line, I'm sure this is really why you're all showing up today, is learning a little bit more on how to perfect the application and talk a little bit about the common pitfalls that a nonprofit should be avoiding while they are preparing their application. And Mike, I'm gonna actually toss this to you um, because this is something that you shared with me, but it's this work backwards process. Can you explain a little bit more what you um, mean by that? Yeah, absolutely. And we occasionally see proposals from, uh, you, you know, proposals that attempt to solve a problem that isn't well defined, mm -hmm. or maybe they attempt to create a solution for a group of people who don't exist. And so because of this, it's worth mentioning the Amazon working backwards process. At Amazon, we start with our customers and work backwards. That means that, uh, and then this is a process we recommend you follow. You know, this means that we recommend you start by understanding who your customer is, what they need or want, and what their frustrations or pain are. Think about how does your solution solve that frustration or pain for your customer? And we recommend that you challenge yourself on your responses. How do you actually know what your customer wants or needs? Do you have data to back that up? Or do you have other you know, information that, that shows that you're right? Think about that experience that you're designing for your customers. What does that look like? What is the value that you're providing to your customers? So if you look through these questions here, these questions are, are really deceptively simple because we find that some builders can spend five minutes and work through this and we see other builders spend five months 
So it, it just really depends, and, and you can go as deep as you want. Uh, at, at Amazon, we write a press release before we build anything. And the purpose of that press release is to help us formulate the answers to these questions and help us visualize exactly what we want to build, who we're building it for, how they'll interact with it, and, and really the benefit that that's going to provide. So there's a QR code here on the screen, and that links to a reInvent video from 2020 that we recommend you watch if you want to see more details on that working backwards process. Great. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you kind of walking through exactly what that process is looking like and how folks can use it for their own organization and as they're thinking about the project that they'll be um, proposing for the grant. Larkin, how about you? What are some of those successful the components of those successful applications you've been seeing in the past? Absolutely. So I think for me, one of the main things is the storytelling you're doing about their your technology impact. So why you know you're speaking to a technology company why for you is the tech a key part of this project that you're trying to achieve you know are you is is it an afterthought is it an add-on is it really something that you need to be successful and if it is then then why make sure you're you're telling a really clear through line of of why you would need this specific funding and this specific grant opportunity another thing i think i mentioned earlier in the call was this integration and thought work among your business leaders, your IT stakeholders, and your program and project leads. I'd be curious to some of you on the call, have you ever, if you're a programmer, have you ever talked to your IT, you know, server provisioner? Or, you know, are you having those cross-functional conversations? Because sometimes diversity of thought in the room, especially when you're doing the working backwards process, can be transformational and really unlock things that may not have been serving you. Um, so I see a question in the chat, who are business leaders? I just mean your CEO, your founder, someone who's making the kind of core okay. duration of your nonprofit. We, are, we don't expect you to collaborate with businesses. It just as a term, kind of those, those decision makers. So it's a great clarifying question. And then do you have defined goals for this? Is this a project that you're running year over year? You're not quite sure of what the impact is, but you know you need funding for it, or do you really have a set out plan? Like you wanna create a research collaboration platform to serve X people in the next two years to do X, Y, Z. So really work on defining that one to two sentence overview of what your goal is for this project. And I'm saying project a lot because I think that's the most defined way to think about an application. We know your organization is doing great things. Obviously your mission is important. We agree with that, but kind of, driving down a level deeper, kind of what is something defined that we can help you achieve and what are those goals and outcomes associated with that? Great, thanks Larkin. And then I know you have a, one more tip that you wanted to share with everybody today. Absolutely, I just, another recommendation is looking at the package of resources that we're offering. Kind of, would you leverage all of these? Are all of these important to your organization? And why not? Obviously funding is critical, we know that, but we're also providing AWS technical implementation expertise, the marketing and storytelling support, the training, and the actual credits and coverage of costs in the cloud. So a tip is to, you know, if you wanna be competitive and the program is quite competitive, let us know that all of these would be valuable to you so that we can best utilize and distribute our resources. Thanks, Larkin. That's that's a great tip and making sure that it it's not just the unrestricted funds or it's not just the credits, but really everything that both packages uniquely have um, and using them to the fullest extent. So, Mike, I'm going to shift gears and kind of ask you some, a little bit more about these technical elements that we're seeing now. Round one application, it's fairly high level um, of the asks that we're looking for for the technical um, parts of the application and for the project. Um, but these are still new tools, thing, questions that might be unfamiliar to many. Um, so wondering if you can kind of walk us through a little bit about what those technical questions are looking like um, and, and ways to be prepared in, in order to answer them fully and accurately. Yeah, absolutely. The The thing that I would recommend to everyone at, at this stage is to, to not overthink your answers too much. In many cases, the, the responses that we're asking for are 400 words or, or uh, yeah, 400 words or less. So there's, you know, we're not looking for pages and pages of, of material here. 
it really questions at this stage really um, fall into three main categories, you know, a, a, a description, a budget, and a plan for implementation. So let's talk about that overview first. Uh, again, this field is only uh, uh, is fairly short. Um, there's only 400 words you can enter, but we're just trying to figure out what are you trying to do? I mean, we talked about working backwards and, and that process to define exactly what you're trying to build. Uh, tell us what you're working with today from an IT standpoint. How does this project fit in? And, you know, how does it potentially enhance what, you know, the mission that you're trying to complete? From a budget perspective, I'm going to talk more about that on the next slide of how to actually calculate how much you need uh, in AWS promotional credits. But, uh, you know, keep in mind that it, most AWS services are, are pennies on the dollar, so you're not going to be looking for huge amounts of, of credit here in many cases. Finally, on the implementation side, this is just the question to describe how you would do the project. Like, if, if you received the go-ahead today, what would you do? And, you know, be thinking about if you have resources in-house to do, to do the work, great. Do you have the right training? If not, mention that. Let us know you, that you need training help. If you don't have the right people internally or you don't have people internally to do the work, let us know. If there's a partner you'd like to leverage, let us know. And if you don't have a partner, but you still need help, we have a, a, a broad partner network that works with nonprofits that, that we can engage to help you out. Great, thanks, Mike. So you talked about budget and how to kind of help justifying the funding needed. So walk us through it. How can we figure out what's the budget that's needed? Yeah, well, so first of all, there's a QR code on this page that will link you to the AWS pricing calculator. If you don't want to use the QR code, the URL is super easy. It's just calculator.aws. And I'm going to take over for you and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. You should hopefully all see the AWS pricing calculator that I have in front of me. This is the mechanism that you want to use to, to calculate the amount of AWS promotional credits that you're going to be requesting. And it's really simple to use. You just be you just need to be thinking about the, uh, the services that AWS provides that you want to use. And I'm going to start out by clicking this Create Estimate button. Let's just go through a very simple example. Let's say that I have uh, some some compute. I have a, you know some EC2 instances I need to run that uh, are in front of a database, and I want to protect this with uh, a web application firewall. So those are really the three components that I'm interested in pricing out. So I can either scroll through this list here, or I can just simply type the service that I want to use. So I'll just type EC2. I'll click configure. I verify the region that I'm in, um, and I have options for either doing a quick estimate or an advanced estimate. With EC2, if I know a lot of details around my workload and what that looks like, the advanced estimate will give me the best, uh, the best estimate. But if I don't have some of those details, I, I can just click quick estimate, and it will make a lot of assumptions for me and make it really easy to, to work through here. So I just pick my operating system. I'm running Linux. If I know the instance type I want to use, I can pick that. If I if I don't, I just know, you know, the number of CPUs and the amount of memory I need. I can just enter that. Let's say in this example, I need two CPUs and four gigs of memory. It recommends a, a T4G medium, which is one of our, our Graviton instances. I pick the, the quantity I need. Let's just say for this example, I need 10 of these. And let's say that I expect these to be used 85% of the time. I can then pick how do I want to pay for these? Will I be using a savings plan or some sort of reserved instance, instance or will I just use on-demand pricing? So to save money, I'm going to pick an EC2 savings plan. I'm going to leave my storage as is. I think that's fine. And you can see here at the bottom that it gives me a monthly price for EC2, a monthly price for my storage and a total price for each EC uh, for those EC2 instances on a monthly basis. I just click this add to estimate button and you can see that it adds that to my estimate and it gives me now a, a monthly charge or I'm sorry a, an annual cost for what this would be. Let me just add a new service. I'll click this add service button. 
I now want to add a database to my estimate. So I will just type RDS. And I'm going to be using Amazon RDS for my SQL. I'll just click the configure button. And again, it's going to uh, make some uh, assumptions for me. If I know the instance family that I want to use, I can change that. I am, I'm just going to uh, pick a medium, uh, M1 medium. I can pick whether I want this to be a multi-AZ or not. Um, let's see, from a storage amount, I need 50 gigs. And again, I can see the cost for my instance and the cost for storage, the total cost, and I'll click add to estimate. So you can see now that I have an, uh, a, now a new 12 month total and I can see the individual breakout uh, of a monthly charge for each of the services that I'm adding. The last thing I want to add is a web application firewall. So I'll click add service. Type web application firewall, click configure. And there are some details around the, the web application firewall around how many web access control lists you need, how many rules in, inside each, each of those. Uh, I, I've just already done some calculations. I'm just gonna add um, a couple of things here. And I'm, going, I'm planning on receiving 1 million requests per month that my web application web application firewall needs to protect against. Okay, you can see it costs a total of sixty-five dollars a month. I'll click Add to Estimate, and now this is my twelve-month estimate for this workload that I would provide to AWS. There's also a Save and Share button here. If you click this, what this will do is this will give you a link that you can copy, and uh, this makes it really easy to share this estimate with other people on your team and even with us through the Imagine Grant. All right, Jana, awesome. I will turn that back yeah. over to you. Great, thank you, Mike. Appreciate that run through um, of how to use the pricing calculator um, and things like that. So what we want to do now is shift gears um, to question and answer. Uh, we're getting a lot of folks dropping questions into the chat here. We've also received additional questions through the Imagine Grant alias. So let's start off with a question that we got earlier today. Larkin, I'd love if you could help me answer this. Um, in the past, how many winners have there been or how many winners are we are, are to be expected for each category? Absolutely, it's a great question. In the past, we've had six winners and four runners up. We just had one category. I can tell you we're expecting to award more winners than that, but I don't, I don't wanna share it too soon. We may have more budget availability. We may have less depending on if we give everyone full amounts. There are a lot of different factors, so I don't wanna give you a number, but you can say more than 10. I also see how many applications do you typically get I cannot disclose any of these numbers to you or my legal team would get very mad at me, but I can tell you it's very competitive. We are in the hundreds and hundreds of applicants um, and, and it's hard. We know there are a lot of nonprofits that need funding and need funding for technology because it's not available. It's looked as an overhead cost or administrative cost and, and we think it's the exact opposite and really mission critical. So yes. It's competitive, but this is the start of a relationship with us as well. So we often, even if you don't get awarded, we still try to work with you and try to help you along. Let's say <laughs> architects like Mike on the line who are so knowledgeable and so helpful. These, these services are free of cost to nonprofits. Like we want to work with you. We want to help you in any way we can. The Imagine Grant is just one resource that we have for you. It's gonna help you on your technology journey. Yeah, thanks, Larkin, for mentioning that. I, that's a great point in saying that, oh, you know, getting an award or not getting an award, at the end of the day, your account manager, your account executive will then partner with you to make sure that that project is being fulfilled some way with some, maybe some other training av availability, or maybe it's um, other programs that our team um, provides. So um, this is just one of many different ways. Um, next question I have, uh, Mike, if you can answer this, or Lark can help answer this one as well, is do you want a high level drawing for the, the, the architecture diagram? Um, what's kind of being looked at, at least for round one? So for round one, if you're doing an architecture diagram, 
I, I would recommend it. It might be just for you. So we're not asking for that at the round one stage. In round two, we do ask for the high level drawing of kind of how everything's working, how AWS fits in with your existing systems. Um, and we do have some templates for that and icons and self-service resources that we can use so you're not making icons yourself or trying to draw by hand. So we'll make sure you get those resources, but for round one, we don't need that just yet. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is about some of the resources that come into the packages. So would you need to use the promotional credits within 12 months of receiving them if awarded? Yes, those do come with an expiration date. So unlike the unrestricted funding, you know, that's at your organization's discretion. You could use it immediately. You could use it over the longer term. But the credits do have an expiration date, which is why we wanted to walk you through the cost uh, calculator. Because as Mike mentioned, some of these prices are very, very low. They're cents on the dollar. So giving you more credits is really not a benefit to you. It's like a gift card to a restaurant that you could never go to. So mm -hmm. they would just expire and not be used. So that's why we're, we're wanting to help you estimate that just so that you're able to use what's provided over the one year time frame. And that's not to say that we couldn't work with you in future years to get you more credit funding, but for this project, you know, it's easiest to just help do that one year estimate and that will give us an idea as you build, as you scale. And then also as we optimize and frankly lower prices, you know, it really could be, it look different for you in future years. Great. Next question, uh, Mike, hoping that you might be able to answer this. Are there resources prior to grant where we can brainstorm with AWS staff about what services will meet our needs to help us re refine our application? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's important to remember that every customer has access to both an AWS account executive as well as a solutions architect like myself. And each of your AWS account teams can help you through the technical details of your application. If uh, you have other workloads, I mean, we're more than happy to review whatever your whatever is important to you so that you can be successful in the cloud. If you don't know who your account executive is, you can email us uh, on the address at the screen and we'll get you in touch with the right people. Yep, we're here to connect you. Um, next question, we have great questions here. How about this? Larkin, question for you. Do you have tips on how to categorize our organization if it doesn't fit neatly into one of the categories listed in the application? Okay, I might have a follow up here. So if you see yourself as not being super big, but also a little bit more foundational, am I understanding that correctly? I believe so. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's a good question. I think um, as you think through your timeline, your scope, what resources you need, and I would wonder if you've also done the working backwards process, if that helps you a little bit further to find kind of where you see yourself. Um, so I would, if you're not sure you're a go further faster, like for sure, I would maybe start out with momentum to modernize. As you know, just just think about the type of projects that we might receive for either, and you know, and make your best educated guess. I think that's my best suggestion. Thank you. Um, I'm going to look at some of the questions that we're getting through um, to the email address here. Uh, first question. I'm a 501C, but not 501C3. Can I apply for the AWS Imagine grant? You absolutely can. And that's why we left it open is to be able to support credit unions, membership organizations, professional associations, et cetera. Great. Um, good clarification. I know we get that question a lot. Um, another question coming through email. I'm unclear on what it means by modernizer. Are you looking for projects with components such as virtual reality or some of those hardware sort of projects? Mike, are you able to answer that one for us? Yeah, I can. It's best to think about modernization is really an activity where you update your application so that it has an agile application architecture. Modernization activities, they, they typically involve moving away from monolithic application components that don't scale well and moving to cloud native services. So 
For example, a, a modernization activity might involve moving away from an on-prem data center to the cloud, or moving application code away from running on EC2 and running in maybe a containerized or a serverless environment. So, uh, you know, organizations typically move to microservices and other architectures where there aren't hard limits on, on scaling that you typically see with monolithic application architectures. So, um, you know, modernization activities are, are typically done so an organization can enjoy the benefits of cloud native architectures in the future. So that's what we mean when we're, we're talking about modernizer or moderniz modernization. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I understand language there can be interpreted different ways. So thank you for that clarification. Larkin, next question's for you. If we applied last year but didn't receive funding, mm -hmm. Is it best to provide an application for a completely new project, or is it okay to apply again for a similar project that is tweaked a bit from the previous application? I would say absolutely apply again. If that's still your most pressing project, you've looked at the criteria and you think it fits one of the categories, definitely apply again. We've had organizations that applied in one year and then one the next year. So certainly we, we will look at that. We will look at your growth. We will look, we even are asking kind of what's changed for you since you applied the previous year. So, you know, that's a good opportunity to be like, hey, maybe this wasn't fully scoped as we wanted to when we applied first, but now we're here, we've done a migration, we've set ourselves up for success. So you're welcome to apply for the same project. And I would just definitely recommend kind of asking yourself those things and including anything that would be relevant for us to know about what might have changed this mm -hmm. year. And a follow-up question to that, does it help our round one application to indicate the degree of engagement we have had already with our account executive and architect in building our technology? I think it does help. I think it, it, it gives you a stronger kind of sustainability um, potential from our perspective. So it shows that you're engaged, you have a plan for this moving forward. If we were to award you as a winner, you could actually execute your project. And I think, you know, I think that is a great factor to include. And that goes back to what Mike was saying, reach out to your account executives, have them uh, talk with them through the project that you're thinking of, L allow them to talk through perhaps identifying what might be the right category, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's a great conversation to have. They'll have a lot of um, answers specifically to your challenges or questions and things of that sense. Um, so definitely recommend reaching out there. Uh, another question that's uh, kind of related also, and I think, Mike, you've already alluded to this, but I need some technical assistance with my application. Is this something AWS can help me with? You mentioned reaching out uh, to account executives and solutions architects. Are there other resources or are items that folks can look up? Yeah, there, so there are a lot of options here. If you just want like an architectural review, if you want some technical guidance, if you, you know, if you look at the um, all the services that AWS offers, and you need help in terms of identifying what services should I use for this particular workload, that's something where the solutions architect can really help you out. If you need hands-on keyboard, like I, I don't have the staff to build this, I, I need some support here. That's where we can engage our professional services, or uh, we can also engage one of our many partners that we work with to help you actually build what, uh, what you have in mind. Okay, good to know. And then there's all sorts of trainings and um, I know on our on our on the website, if um, where the where the portal accesses and everything, there's a list uh, and links to other resources to again help familiarize with the different asks in the in the application and to help again just really tighten that technical aspect there. So. Um, yeah, lots we, of different we, levels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we like you mentioned, we have training online. Um, uh, Solutions Architects also provide what we call immersion days, which is where we go really deep um, on a specific topic where we train you or other people on your team on how to use a service. Gotcha. Great. Okay, so looking through some of the questions a little bit more here. Uh, do you... Uh, uh, this one came through the email. Do you have to use AWS as part of the project proposal? Mike, I'll give that one to you. 
No, you absolutely don't need to use AWS as part of the project proposal, but you should think about what the Imagine Grant is. I mean, um, the, the award package includes a large amount of AWS specific credits. So it really is best to, uh, you know, for organizations that are planning to use AWS technology in their project design. Okay. So going back to what Larkin, you were saying of, of a, a best practice or that tip is whole, the application holistically and how is your application really going to pull the cash, the credits, the training, um, the marketing sort of storytelling um, opportunities and things like that. So uh, the stronger applications are going to have aspects that are touching to all of those. Um, I think we have just a couple more questions here. Um, let's see. Uh, I think let's give this, Larkin, if you could help me answer with this one. I know AWS gives discounts for server costs if you pay up front for multiple years. Could you use credits for this or can they only be used for services used in one year? So I guess the question is, how do credits from other projects um, and other um, uh, server costs that kind of been paid up front, can they be used in conjunction or are they only using the credits that are given? How does it kind of play off of other sort of uh, resources that customers might already have? Great question. And I would recommend looking at all of the eligible services that are eligible to be covered by the promotional credits. Usually it's just on-demand services and does not apply to reserved in, in instances or anything you would pay upfront. But certainly it's something you would want to discuss with a solutions architect and your account manager who can really help you understand kind of what's the billing, where will the credits go to, and do a deeper dive at that level. And Mike, if you want to add on to that, feel free. No, I, I think that's perfect. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Great. Okay, I think we have two more questions here. Um, Larkin, can you provide any more information on how applications are judged? Is there any last bit of advice that you might have for folks um, as they're kind of in thinking in the, uh, the mindset of, what a, a, of a judge that's reading all these applications? Absolutely. I think, you know, thinking from a judge's perspective, a clear objective and a story that you're telling with technology is key. So we have the criteria that's listed on the website. I won't rattle them all off because they're they're written there for you, but kind of innovative and unique nature of the idea, applica application of AWS services, like do you actually need the cloud to do it? Or, you know, would it be better suited for another opportunity? Um, so those are some of the things. And also like, as you're describing your project and, and then describing your technology, think about how those might relate to each other. So if we say that, if you say you're gonna serve 5 million people in the next year through your mobile app, but then we look at your technology architecture and maybe it's not set up to do that, or maybe it's not you know, architected in a way for you to meet that, we might wonder, okay, why don't those two objectives meet? So from my perspective, I'm looking for those things. Um, and then Mike, I'm curious for you from a technology standpoint, what are some things that might make you ask a few more questions about a nonprofit's approach if you were to read a proposal? Uh, again, I think it, it comes back to that working backwards uh, this process that we work through. I mean, if it's clear reading the proposal that they're, that the nonprofit doesn't understand their customers or they're making assumptions that just don't seem right, I'd like a little bit of data to back some of that up. Again, I mean, there's not a whole lot of room there, but just enough so that it uh, it shows that you've thought through the problem and thought through the technology. Great. Thank you for that insight. I know that's really helpful. I know when I'm applying to things, I'm always thinking in the eyes of who's reading. Um, so having that little bit of insight is very helpful. The last question I think I can answer. Um, this is one that we got through the email. I don't feel like I'm ready for either of these AWS Imagine Grant categories. Is there another way to get support from AWS? And whoever sent this question, perfect segue for me as we're wrapping up today's discussion. Yes. Our AWS nonprofits team has many different programs available for nonprofits in any sort of stage of their digital transformation 
or their journey onto the cloud and really diving into it. Um, one program in particular that I want to highlight is our AWS Nonprofits Credit Program. This is a credit program where nonprofits can receive up to $2,000 um, in AWS promotional credits per year. And this is a great program where you're maybe you're just diving in on a program, want to pilot something. You may not be able or, or have the capacity or think that maybe that momentum to modernize category, you're quite there yet, but you still are wanting to explore what the cloud has to offer. This is a great program um, to help kind of offset the costs, um, as you saw in the pricing calculator, to test things out. So definitely recommend folks um even if your projects are ready to go for imagine grant this is a great program for you also to um get a little bit more support for aws cloud services uh the other um asset that we have available is our aws imagine not to be confused with imagine grant but our aws imagine nonprofit co conference and our nonprofit webinars we have videos from our conference last year, as well as all sorts of um, events on demand, where you can watch whenever, wherever you want. They really dive deep into different sort of um, technical themes, or maybe it's um, talking about making that transition from on-premise to the cloud and how you bring stakeholders along with you, um, really understanding what can be unlocked once you're on the cloud. So we have all sorts of webinars to really inspire you um, of different capabilities of what you can do once you're on the cloud or in the cloud and going above and beyond. Our, our nonprofit Imagine uh, conference is solely for our nonprofit customers. We have non nonprofit customer speakers really telling their stories. So it's an opportunity for you to hear from your peers um, who might be going through similar sort of um, processes in their organizations. We also have our AWS nonprofit office hours, and I saw this question come into the chat. Will we be hosting these again? Yes, we host our monthly office hours every month, and it's exactly the sort of format. We bring experts in to dive deep into a certain theme or technical service, um, what have it. They, we, we really base it off feedback that we're getting from customers of what they want to learn more of. Um, and that's how we're hosting our, our conversation today about the grant. We know we're getting a lot of questions there. So come join us. Uh, it's live. We're reading the questions live and responding back live. So it's a great opportunity to get even more attention um, to different problems and, and things that you're you might be experiencing or wanting to learn more about. And then lastly, as we've talked about all day today, our AWS Imagine Grant, um, the category, the round one application is now open. It's open until the end of the month. If you have not downloaded the instructions yet, that is step number one. Go to our website and download that. And, and if you have questions, reach out to your account executive. Um, get a calendar, a meeting on the calendar to, to talk through a little bit more maybe about your, your project proposal or your near finish for your application and just want to get um, have a conversation and get some feedback. Maybe you would like to talk with folks on the line, myself, Larkin, Mike. Um, we're available, but uh, to get to us, go to your account manager. They'll help kind of get those meetings. Um, and as always, we have the um, alias uh, that AWS Imagine at Imagine Grant at Amazon.com open and moderated. So any questions that you have, if we can't answer them, we'll find someone who can answer them. So a lot of different ways to get to us. We're available, so reach out. Um, and then we'd like to hear from you what you all would like to hear next time. So if you use that URL there, that's a little survey um, to get a little bit of feedback of what information you'd like to hear from us. But I want to thank everybody for joining us here today. You all are calling in from different time zones, different corners. Uh, it's lunch for some. It's time to pick up kids for another. We know you're busy, so we appreciate you taking the time. Larkin and Mike, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. You all are the experts um, when it comes to AWS Imagine Grant and really putting together a successful application. So thank you all for being here. Again, my name is Jana London, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.